In a greedy and destructive mood, Wizards of the Coast is changing their open gaming license, the legal agreement that allows for third-party publishers to create for Dungeons & Dragons. If this is the first you've heard about the OGL changes, check out Linda Cordega's Gizmodo articles that are linked in the description. They broke the news and explained the whole situation. It's very dramatic and will no doubt have rippling effects across the entire tabletop role-playing game hobby. I've personally gotten a lot of questions about how this new D&D OGL fiasco will affect my Patreon and the YouTube channel and I kind of feel obligated to make a video that addresses it, but I also want my videos and honestly everything that I create to be positive and helpful. So I'm also gonna recommend some excellent games to try out if you're interested in moving away from Dungeons and Dragons or if you just wanna play something new for a bit. I'll put a timestamp on the video if you wanna skip ahead to those recommendations. So the thing I love about D&D is that it's a gateway to creativity. D&D the hobby is a way to gather with friends and create stories together. It's one of my favorite things to do. And the thing that I think is so awesome about playing D&D the game is that you and I get to create our own stories. We get to mess with the rules and add and subtract. No corporation gets to tell us how we play this game. And as far as I'm concerned, every player, every dungeon master, home brewer, third party publisher has just as much ownership over D&D that Hasbro does. Because when we sit down and play, it's our game. It's our Dungeons and Dragons. Now, on the other hand, D&D the brand, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure what D&D the brand is. I guess it's a collection of IPs like the Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance. I know it's a very recognizable trademark and logo, and I get why a big corporation like Hasbro wants to protect their brand and all that stuff, but I think killing what makes the actual game so wonderful seems, it just seems super dumb to me. <laughs> and I guess I don't really have any other constructive comments to make about all this OGL news in the wider sense. The new OGL and, and honestly, the original OGL or OGL 1.0a doesn't affect my work directly, but man, do I feel really bad for my peers that have to reconsider their entire creative output because of all of this. The adventures that I write for my Patreon are all system neutral. They can easily be used for Dungeons and Dragons or any other fantasy game of your choice. I guess I do have one project, the drawing every monster in the 5e monster manual that is gonna need a, a little bit of reframing when it goes into print. In fact, with the help of a pal, I'm starting work on a really cool way to turn all of the non-Wizards of the Coast trademarked monsters into paper miniatures in a really cool way. I'm very, very excited about it. So all of this is to say that I won't be signing the OGL 2.0 because nothing about how I write adventures or make videos or any of the other creative projects I've got going will really change. Now, I do think that these changes are gonna have a big, big effect on the tabletop role-playing game hobby in general. 5e is by far the biggest and most played game. It's how I got back into playing RPGs a few years ago. And I really hope that even if 5e shrinks, that just as many new people will be getting into the hobby going forward. You know, it would really, really break my heart to hear that people stop playing games altogether because of some dumb changes made to Dungeons and Dragons. And the truth is, I haven't actually played 5th edition D&D for like three years now. I haven't played a ton of other games, but I have found some excellent replacements for 5th edition. So yeah, here are some suggestions for other games to play instead of 5e. These are all games that I've either played or run myself. They're all fantasy games, and they're all about exploring dangerous places, fighting monsters, and 
finding cool treasure. First up is Shadow of the Demon Lord. I've played in two long running campaigns of this game and it's become my group's default replacement for fifth edition. Now I should mention that the fantasy setting in these books is pretty dark, but our DM runs a sort of homebrew world that is a little more lighthearted than how the game is presented. Just fair warning if, if you're a fan of this channel. I think if you're looking for a game that's easier to run than 5e but still has tons of interesting options for players to make really cool and distinct heroes, definitely, definitely check out Shadow of the Demon Lord. Next up is Five Torches Deep. I use this game to play test my first Patreon adventures and I love, love, love this game. It's a game that combines fifth edition and the old school Renaissance design philosophy. Basically, if you know how to play fifth edition, you know how to play this game too. You can think of it like a, a streamlined version of 5e. It's faster and lighter and the players have to be a little bit more creative with situations because not everything is spelled out for them mechanically. Everything you need to run your game, and I mean everything, is included in the 50 page book. Actually, Actually, now that I'm saying that there are some really cool supplements that add to the game, I'd say if you're going to try Five Torches Deep, definitely grab the Origins book too because it makes creating characters like a lot better. Okay, now speaking of the old school renaissance, the OSR, I'm going to recommend Nave. It's the game that I use to play test the Dragon Town zine. And Nave is like an even more stripped down version of old school D&D. It's so, so easy and elegant to run, but the play style is a little bit different. There are no classes, but there's a really cool inventory system that kind of encourages, you know, if you want to be a wizard, you're, you're holding on to a bunch of spells. If you want to be a, a fighter, you have a shield and a sword, that kind of thing. The cool thing about Nave is the game is more about the players using their brains and finding creative solutions than it is about choosing abilities and reading them off of your character sheet at the right time. Now, while I haven't played them yet, I'm excited to run Cairn and this game Cave In and Into the Odd at some point. These games are all inspired by each other and build off the similar old school style of play. Definitely check all of them out. They're all wonderful. I should say they're all small, like small thin rule books. They're not these big tomes where you have to learn tons of rules. Oh yeah, I should say that everything I'm mentioning in this video is gonna be linked down in the description so you can find out more about these awesome games down there. Next up, if you want a truly minimal experience where the GM and the players get to really be creative with the storytelling, check out Tunnel Goons. This is a Creative Common Games. It's what I use to make Goons and Ghosts my ghost busting tabletop role playing game. If you're someone who is overwhelmed by rules but wants to play and have fun, you gotta check out Tunnel Goons. Okay, for this next one, I'm gonna have to break my rule. I haven't played this game yet, but I just read the book the other day and I can't wait to play it. It's called Venture and Dungeon. It's actually two games in one book. They use the same basic mechanics but are kind of different settings. Venture is the game where the players will become adventurers that are traveling through a fantasy world. So this is a story game. There are no dice. You kind of pass tokens back and forth, but really it's just talking to create a story together. It seems kind of similar to a Powered by the Apocalypse style game. Players have these playbooks that give them unique actions and ask helpful questions to get the story moving. I'm really, really excited about this one. I can't wait to play it. And last, but definitely not least, is The Land of Eam. If you're a fan of my channel and the type of adventures that I create, you gotta check out Land of Eam. In fact, I'm writing two adventures for the game. It's a fun D12 system with all kinds of weird and fun characters to interact with and colorful places to explore. The game is really easy to run and the books have tons of resources for creating your own stories. Lots of cool player options too. Go check out the preview. The game's not out yet, but you can pre-order it and the books are gonna be 
absolutely beautiful. Okay, so I have just listed a bunch of games to check out, but there are so, so many more. These are just the fantasy D&D-like ones that I've played. Besides checking out these games, I want to encourage you to find other games to try as well. There are so many awesome experiences to be had out there. As much of a bummer as all this OGL stuff has been over the last couple of weeks, it's been really cool to see how many people are starting to get interested in checking out new games. I hope that can continue and lots and lots of people find new experiences to enjoy. You know, when it comes down to it, I just want the tabletop role-playing game hobby to grow so as many people as possible can experience these awesome games. Let me know if there's other games that I should be checking out down in the comments. I'd love to hear about them. If you'd like to support this channel, I'm releasing new tabletop role-playing game adventures and guidebooks every month on my Patreon. Many of them you can use with all of the games that I've listed here. This month in January, I'm really excited about this one. I'm doing a guide on how to draw dungeons. More on that in the next video. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!